Okay, now the next thing is just basically you have to be able to recognize strong acids, strong bases, weak acids, weak bases, and salts. Now for a start, these ones on the left, hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, sulfuric acid, and HBr, they're all strong acids. Now, HBr is what I wouldn't expect you to necessarily know, but all these are going to be acids that completely dissociate and are going to be strong. So they're not in an equilibrium. So you should recognize those ones. Now, these first three here are all just carboxylic acids and we've got that OOH that you typically see with carboxylic acids and that means they're weak and on the right here I've shown the conjugate so this is the acid on the left and the conjugate base on the right okay and the same here and here so spotting weak acids that are carboxylic acids especially once you've done organic chemistry shouldn't be too hard and recognizing the base which has that negative charge there shouldn't be too hard either HF is a little unusual, that is a weak acid, you are expected to know that, and this would be the conjugate base. Ammonium NH4 plus is going to be a weak acid, NH3 is its conjugate, that's going to be a weak base. This one uh, you may not remember, but CH3 NH2 on the right here is an amine. Amines are weak bases, and this is its conjugate base, CH3 NH3. Plus. All of these weak acids here and these weak bases on this side, they only partially dissociate water, so you should be able to write the equations for that. These are all strong bases on the far right. Sodium hydroxide, it's just going to form hydroxide ions, such as potassium hydroxide. The sulfide ion is 2 minus is really asked about that is a strong base so um, just make a note of that that's probably not going to be asked in any exam but it is a strong base all right now recognizing salts is also important the salt is an ionic solid that when you put it into water the first thing it's going to do is split into the positive ion and the negative ion. And you'll recognize when you look at these what it's likely to split up. For instance, you've got the Na, Cl, Cl here, and then the Na here as well. So obviously here that Cl is going to turn into a Cl minus. And there aren't too many of these they can ask, so you'll start familiar with it, how you're simply splitting it and how the charge works on this. So as we go through, this is it just, as you put this into a solution, or sorry I should just say water, it's going to ionize and form the two separate ions. Okay? No different for instance if you put in ACL in water, how that would split up into Na plus and Cl minus. Now the main difference with this is you have to make a decision once you've, you've put them into water whether they're an acid or a base. So in an exam you would definitely write down both equations. So if you had this, what happens when you put that in water? First it ionizes and forms these two. And then you're thinking, well, do either of those react with water? Now you should have enough experience by now to know that chloride ion isn't going to do anything. But NH4 plus is a weak acid, so when you put that, and once it forms that in water, it's going to establish an equilibrium like this. So that's a weak acid. And when you put this in water, it's going to form uh, the ethanol ions, and that's going to react with water. Make sure you get the equilibrium sign correct when it's necessary to put it in there. And again you're thinking, well this is a base, so I'll see hydroxide ions as well. 
and CH3. NH3 plus is a weak acid. When you put it into water, it's going to form a conjugate base and H3O plus. Oops, sorry about that. Everything's all over the place here. Try to rip that out. And then finally, you'll recognize this as being fairly similar. Sorry to shift the number of those. You organize this as just being another base, so when you put that into water, it's going to form CH3, CH2, COOH, plus OH minus ions. So you should be able to do those equations. You should have be able to recognize a salt. Okay?